thought for me. Every year, you guys come to me, ask us to do a top 50 ranking list. Every year, there are more than 300 universities that we look through, grade them on different criteria. And every year, I end up with a slightly different top 50 list of institutions. Today's video is going to be the top 50 MS and CS, but I'm not going to do it the traditional way. I'm not going to give you universities ranking from 1 to 50 because I don't think that makes sense anymore. Instead, I'm going to divide this into tiers of institutions, institutions that are absolutely elite, all the way to institutions where you might still want to go only if certain factors are coming up. Welcome to Gradvine's MS and CS Top 50 Ranking. Unlike the previous years where we give you a list of all the 50 institutions ranked by which position they come in, this year is slightly different. This year, we've tried to tier all of these institutions into individual buckets of their own. This will enable anyone who's looking for a fall 2026 admit to pick and choose universities from each one of these tiers to make the comprehensive list that they need to. The first tier of institutions is my elite list. These are institutions which should be on every single elite applicants list of universities to apply to. And these are the five universities that are the most rigorous masters in computer science degrees. The first one, and it comes as no surprise to anybody, is going to be MIT. The second on my list within the elite tier is going to be Stanford. Third is going to be my alma mater of Carnegie Mellon, which cannot be left aside for anything related to computer science. Fourth is going to be another institution where I've spent a little bit of time, which is the University of California, Berkeley. And fifth on my elite tier is going to be Georgia Institute of Technology or Georgia Tech. These are five institutions that make the pinnacle of every MS and CS list that goes out there. And all of these are clubbed together in our elite tier of institutions for this year. Now, the second tier. By a second tier, I do not mean second tier in the literal sense of the word. Second tier institutions are slightly, ever so slightly below the first tier, and it comprises of another five institutions. Harvard, University of Michigan, University of Pennsylvania, Columbia, and the University of Texas Austin make up my tier two institutions for fall 2026. The goal with this video is to make sure that we are not breaking down and ranking each institution across the board because that's a lost cause. The goal instead is to be able to bucket them, is to be able to put them in the right tiers so that if you are an applicant, you can pick two out of the elite tier, two from the tier two, two from tier three, etc. in order to be able to build your own comprehensive list of institutions. The next tier is what I would refer to as the moderate Tier. There are fantastic value institutions in this tier, and I'm not going to be able to name every single one of them. I will try my best, but it will be up on the screen in just a little bit. In terms of the moderate tier, the factors you need to consider are one and primary, the location of the institute. If the university is in a fantastic location, by default, chances of you being able to find that job after graduation become that much higher. Apart from the location, there are two other factors that we give a lot of importance to. One is the tuition fee in terms of being within the moderate tuition fee category. And the second is that return on investment. Am I able to find a job very easily in the location that I'm going to by paying minimal amount of US dollars and able to get a really high paying job. That's the criteria that defines all of the universities in this mid-tier um, list of places. In this tier, you will find a lot of institutions along the lines of University of Massachusetts, Amherst, UIUC, um, Stony Brook, which is in New York City, while being one fourth the cost of its other institutions, which is NYU and Columbia. By the way, you will also find an NYU in this list, even though the tuition cost is pretty high, it is in bank center of New York City and therefore making it pretty easy for you to be able to find a job. Here are the remaining list of institutions in what I would refer to as the moderate tier. All right, now comes 
the last tier of institutions that we would recommend. This is what I would refer to as the safeties or for all of my international students that are going to be applying value for money institutions. The way to pick universities that are in your safety bucket within the rankings of 30 and 50 is going to be to prioritize ruthlessly whether that university has a co-op or an internship baked into the curriculum. There are four or five universities that offer co-ops and internships built into the curriculum. And those are the four or five institutions that we would highly prioritize within the tier four safety. This is the right way to build out a comprehensive and a well-balanced university list when you're applying for universities for masters in computer science. By the way, I am running a webinar on the 18th of May at 8 p.m. for computer science and data science aspirants. So if you're looking at a master's in CS or a DS for fall 2026, make sure to register. Details will be down in the description box below. This is going to be a webinar where I'm going to tackle everything you need to know about computer science A to Z. From the curriculum, the kinds of universities you should be applying to, the jobs that you might expect to get, all the way to salaries that you may expect to make after you graduate from a good university. Stay tuned for that webinar and make sure to register. Coming back to our tier four, which is the safeties, Northeastern, especially given the co-op opportunity and the location based out of Boston, Arizona State, again, based on the co-op opportunity, UT Dallas, University of Illinois, Chicago, and San Jose State University. These are some of the best possible value for money universities while not breaking the bank, also located in fantastic places and have that co-op or internship built into the curriculum, which enables you to go work and try and convert that internship into a full-time role. Those were the four tiers of universities that exist. I'm sure a bunch of you have other ideas or questions on why didn't XYZ University make it to the list, etc. This is our list of four tiers of institutions that make the most sense. If you have some universities that you feel we've missed out on, Put them in the comment box below and I will personally message you to tell you why or why not we left that university out of our list. Thank you so much for giving us a lot of love. Please like, share and subscribe. That's what my Gen Z marketing guys tell me to do or tell me to say and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.